so by 86, Hubbard dies. Miscavige is basically running everything by now. And, but there is still this tension between uh, ASI and RTC, because RTC is still the, the structural organization that holds the copyrights and the trademarks. And Miscavige is not in charge of that yet. He's in charge of ASI, which is Author Services, which is Hubbard's personal literary agent. When Hubbard dies, I think the calculation that Miscavige made was he looked at this and went, okay, I can keep, co- I can keep running this organization that's collecting the royalties on Hubbard's legacy of writing, or I take over the organization that holds the trademarks and service marks of Dianetics and Scientology, and I actually take over the church as, a, as an entity. And he may, he, for however he made that calculation, he did. Because in 1986, after Hubbard dies, I think, I think it was either late 86 or early 87, Miscavige and a couple of his loyal, most loyal followers um, march into the offices of RTC um, at, the, uh, at the international base. And this is in um, outside San Jacinto, California, and uh, takes over. He kicks out uh, the woman uh, who was in charge of RTC. Her name was Vicki Asneran. And he kicks out some other people. And there was some physical confrontation that occurred here. I've interviewed a man named Jesse Prince who was there in the room at the time. And he actually was so distraught and pissed off at this coup that was happening right in front of him that he went and got a gun and threatened Miscavige with it. And um, anyway, Miscavige talked him down. And succeeded. That was the only resistance. That was the only real effort on somebody's part to physically resist Miscavige taking over. And and um, but Jesse uh, didn't follow through on that. And you know, probably a good thing uh, that he didn't kill anybody. But um, but Miscavige succeeded. That was the point uh, where he, when he took over RTC and he went from being the chairman of the board of ASI to becoming the chairman of the board of RTC. And from that position, he now had full control over the trademarks and service marks of Dianetics and Scientology, which basically put him in charge of licensing which organizations could and couldn't be Scientology organizations, and therefore gave him ultimate power and authority over all of Dianetics and Scientology. But he kept power. He kept control over ASI, right? He did not. He actually went to RTC and became chairman of the board there, and he installed somebody as the head of ASI that he controlled. Because he couldn't do both? No, he didn't. He, he chose not to. For okay. whatever reason, he took over RTC, and, 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 he did no, and he no longer controlled ASI. But for all intents and purposes, and this is the important part, what title he gave himself isn't the important part here. The important part is that everybody of any consequence who held any degree of responsibility or power at the upper levels of Scientology recognized that he was the one who was in charge. And if they crossed him, he would take them out. And here's how he could do that. And this is something that often gets missed, especially in courts of law, because it's, it's this invisible factor and that is the factor of the C organization. The C organization, all of these people, ASI, RTC, all of international management of Scientology, the one thing all these people have in common is that they are C org members first. They've all signed a billion year contract of commitment to the, achieve the aims and goals of Scientology. And you're not exaggerating when you say a billion years. That, what's that? You're not exaggerating when you say a billion years. The contract literally says I commit myself for a billion years. Which infers some sort of reincarnation sort of thing. Yeah. Scientologists believe in life after life after life. Right. You you are an immortal spiritual being called a Thetan. You have lived a near infinite amount of time in the past, and you will live infinitely into the future. You cannot die. This is a core belief of Scientology. Right. So past lives are just a matter of course. I mean, of, of course you have past lives. You, what, what do you think? You started here now? No, you've been living forever. So you've had past lives and you're going to have future lives. So 
right. you commit to the next billion years in the Sea Org because you're all in on this thing, right? I mean, imagine the mindset. I've been there. I signed that contract. You know, I, I, I held out for 17 years. That's how long I lasted as a Sea Org member. It's a little short of a billion. But uh, this is the commitment the Sea Org members make. And, and more importantly... The C organization is sort of this fraternal organization. It doesn't exist. It's not a corporation. It's not a membership trust. There's no legal documents anywhere that incorporate the C organization. It's simply an agreement that these Scientologists have amongst themselves, a commitment, really. I mean, agreement is too light a word. It's a discipline. It's a, it's a, it is a, a, a real group. It really exists, but it doesn't have corporate existence. You can't go sue the C org. You can't take the Sea Org to court. You know what I mean? So all of these people are Sea Org members first. And David Miscavige is the head of the Sea Org. He's the guy at the top of the ranks of the Sea Org. So if he doesn't like what you're doing, or you buck that system in some fashion, then he will use Sea Org discipline on you to remove you and get you out of the way. The corporate stuff is, is smoke and mirrors to them. They don't, they don't think about their organizations within the world of Scientology. They don't think about corporate structures and boards of directors and things like this. These are not important terms to Scientologists and especially not to Sea Org members. If you're in the Sea Org, you're all in at whatever job it is you're assigned to do. You're expected to be a hardcore janitor or you're expected to be a hardcore you know, uh, uh, manager or a course room supervisor or the head of Scientology. All of these things are jobs that you could end up having as a Sea Org member. So all the corporate shenanigans, nobody really keeps track of that stuff inside Scientology. The lawyers do, the accountants do, and the guys at the very top do. David Miscavige keeps his finger on on all this stuff. But the rest of the Sea Org doesn't. They just listen to David Miscavige because he's the head of the Sea Org. And the Scientologists have learned over the years, as Miscavige has come out publicly, that he's the one who heads up this whole structure. He's the guy at the top. He's the chairman of the board. You know, nobody could tell you who else sits on the board. Nobody knows. Nobody cares. You know, within the world of Scientology, that's just not important. So this is why if he was over ASI or RTC, really that's super important in terms of the internal machinations. 